Here we go. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Happy New Year 2000. To most unwanted and Falls podcast, uh, I am Luke, and I am joined by Daniel Treckley. Hello. How's it going, Trek? I, I, well, I opened the window because I thought, <laughs> oh, it's late, so the kids are off playing. Apparently, the motorbikes come out. Yeah, though. that that's yeah. Mo- motorbike time is night time. So, uh, <laughs> to be fair, I'm surprised we've not got thunder and lightning as well at the moment. Like, apparently, it's a massive storm brewing, isn't there, over us it at the moment? Was yeah, it was scheduled. Um, I'm not closing my window though, so uh, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. can deal with it it's for just, now. It's just going to be what happens. Uh, but anyway, how are you, how are you, Trex? How have you been in these last few weeks? I've got to, I've got to close the window. These <laughs> motorbikes are just doing laps, apparently. <laughs> what is what is going on? Right, I'll make a note. <laughs> F two motorbikes. One no, minute uh, just keep keep it in. It's fine. <laughs> Just, okay. In fact, no. I want I want you to keep this in because okay. I want all of our listeners to know how much I suffer for our craft. <laughs> we need a picture of your red face next. That's all. Just <laughs> <laughs> <Which> hyperventilating. <laughs> oh. Do you see what I go through? For you, do you see? Do you see it? Again, we're attacking the fans. What's going on? <laughs> Straight up, I'm dying here. <laughs> But in lighter news, uh, what have you been up to recently? Uh, we, with the last few episodes, we were talking about what we've done since the, since the break. Uh, what have you been do- doing in the last few weeks, I guess? Any, anything interesting? Um, not really. I mean, most of, most of my things that I'm doing are like over the next couple of weeks. I've got a busy couple of weeks ahead. Um, I've just been like, there's a lot of good TV on at the moment. Mm. Like really good TV. I mean, we've got the... Kenobi series, we've got um, Miss Marvel, which is fantastic by the way, I think I would recommend everyone mm-hmm. check it out um, Stranger Things has really I think, took the world by storm, have you watched the latest I've season? I've still yes? not watched it, <laughs> which I, I couldn't believe the other day there was an advert and it said, Stranger Things season 4 part 2, and I was like, I've not even watched part 1 yet, <laughs> I've got, got, got two bits to catch up on there, but no, I've, I've not watched it yet, I do want to watch it um, it's just one of those where it's yeah. There's been so much other stuff to watch, and and I've been busy with this that, and the other. It's just I've not got around to it yet. But I will, I will watch it. Yeah, yeah. It it's it's phenomenal. It is such good telly. Uh, it's one. It's definitely one of those where I always forget about it in 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 the middle where like in between seasons, and then every time I put it back on, I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I forgot this is one of the best shows mm. on TV right now. It is just so good. Um, and yeah, I'm very much looking forward to part part um, the, the next part mm-hmm. and part two the, uh, the last two episodes which are basically movie length i've heard uh, that yeah. a, the last two episodes i believe are one hour and a half and one hour and 50 minutes mm, okay so yeah. it's basically two films which to be honest with you i'm good with like yeah. I, I i i very much like the disney plus model at the moment where disney plus have had a, a just a they've Planted their foot on the ground. They've said, no, 40-minute episodes. That's all we're going to give you. And to be honest, take credits out. It's about half an hour episodes. Yeah, essentially. I do, it, I do enjoy that. The same way as I I always find it very refreshing when a film comes out, and it's an hour and 20. I, I, I do think there's this culture at the moment where more is more. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like every film that comes out needs to be three and a half hours long. Yeah, otherwise, it's, it's not worth it. There's a lot of times where it's just like, oh, just give me an hour and a half film again. Sometimes it's like, that's all you need. Yeah. yeah. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a stickler for this. Like, 
I, when I went to watch Endgame, for example, oh yeah, yeah, I, like I could that. have sat, I could have sat in the theaters for another hour with that, and that was like a three-hour film. And I don't mind long films. In, in fact, more often than not, I do find myself wanting more. But it, I don't need every film to be two and a half hours long. It's, I find that so refreshing when it's a nice short film. <laughs> um, saying that, the more strange things I get, the better in those next two episodes. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I am very much looking forward to having a full night where I just get to watch strange things for four hours. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about yeah. yourself? You been up too much? Um, again, a lot of stuff in the future. Uh, as of recording tomorrow, or as of time of recording, should I say, tomorrow I'm going to see Darren Brown, the uh, the what would you call him? The illusionist? No, he's not like yeah, a magician. He's like a he's like he's like a, he's like a, a con artist. <laughs> <laughs> There's like psychological things, I guess. Is is more of what it what he do does. Do you believe him? It 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 comes down to that age old thing of do you believe in hypnosis? I, I think it's definitely there, but you have to. You can't hypnotize somebody who doesn't want to be hypnotized, basically. That sounds like a cop out, you know? <laughs> that sounds like such a cop out. I, I, this is a little side story. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I was in Benidorm once, um, and we went to see. There was like this, like, like show. Like, well, it wasn't a show, it was like just a bar, and there was mm. a hypnotist there. And they. I know the tricks. I know, like, when they ask for volunteers, they know it's going to work because the only people that would volunteer want to be hypnotized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that they're more, that, that's the way they see it. They, they say, oh, it's more, they're more, um, suggestible. Uh, suggestible. That's a perfect way to put it. And, um, I was putting my hand up because I was like, I, 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 I want to prove this guy wrong. Do you know what I mean? And, and then maybe the problem is if I went up and nothing happened, he would just turn around and say, yeah, but you didn't want to be hypnotized. And so yeah, you want yeah. suggestible, you close your mind off. Um, which is a great get out. It's a great get out. <laughs> I just feel I don't know, man. Like I feel like it's either set up with actors or it's people that go up that so desperately want to be hypnotized that they just do things and say it was hypnosis. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I I would I know what you mean, but my dad was hypnotized and he did <laughs> stuff that he definitely would not have done. And he said to us Oh, I was just playing up. I was just playing up. And it's like, no, you weren't. Because the stuff that you did, there's no way you do in real life. Like, What did he do? I can't say. I can't say. You can, you can say. What did he do? Um, Give us a taste. I mean, it's the, the way... Uh, so there, there was a point where... <laughs> I can tell how awkward this is for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, my dad is old-fashioned. Let's put it that way. Okay, yeah. Um... And one of the the parts in it was that he had to uh, full on ballroom dance with another man. Now, okay. my dad would not do that. Like, just yeah, like, yeah. would not do that. Just because he's like old fashioned. He's like, I'm not. I'm not dancing with another man. You know what I mean? Like that yeah, kind of like yeah. old That's school old kind fashion. of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I get that. And he was fully into it. Like fully like doing the, the all the moves and like the dips and the spins. And it's oh, like, wow. There's like. There's no you've way convinced me. You've convinced me. You've, you met my, you've met my dad. He's like he'll mess about, but he's not like a, a, yeah, he doesn't yeah, play yeah. up. You know what I mean? To, to, yeah, yeah, for sure. So I was like, "There's no way my dad would have done that unless something was, you know, I, I don't know, like tricking him to do it." You know what I mean? Like, so my when I was young, this is a really strange intro. When <laughs> yeah. I was young. Um, my we're just giving life stories now. Yeah. When I was young, my uh, same thing. We went on a holiday, and there was, it was like an all inclusive type, you know, like everything in one complex type of deal. And they had entertainment on every night, and there was a hypnot- hypnotist there. And I remember my dad going up, doing the same thing, and it was very much like I remember. I was quite young; I was like eight, nine, so I don't remember exactly. But I remember like one of the things was like when you wake up. There's gonna be like uh, like topless dancers in front of mm, you, like, yeah. and like all the guys got like really sort of handsy on stage yeah. and stuff like that. And that. It's one of those where it's like, okay, they could have just been playing up. Yeah. And then there was basically the end. The way they ended the show was, he said, "I'm gonna tell you the lottery numbers, and you're gonna have the lottery numbers, and you're gonna know exactly what they are, but you can't place them. And if anyone asks you what those lottery numbers are," You're going to scream and shout and tell them to mind your own business. Mm, I think I've seen that kind of trick done as well, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's it's a good ending trick because what you get then is he goes, thank you very much, good night, and, everyone, and all the guys will walk off stage and then throughout all corners of the ballroom that it's in, 
you get guys shouting at their families. For, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And everyone's yeah. laughing because it's like all this chaos going on around mm-hmm. them. And I remember my dad coming up to the table and my mum asked him, like, oh, what are the lottery numbers? And he screamed, like, like a guttural scream, like, mm-hmm. to mind your own business and stuff like that. And I remember I burst out crying because I didn't like seeing it. And then my mom, my mom's like, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And she turned to my dad and said, just t- tell him properly because he's scared. And I said to my dad, what's the lottery numbers? And my dad just went, it, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. And, yeah. you, know, and you, you know what I mean? And I was just like, yeah. so that's, I think that's put a, 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 the, the, the sort Idea, of yeah. suspicion in yeah. me from a young age. that was like, it's just people playing up because it's a fun thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, th- that's the thing. I mean, it, uh, this, is, this is a very deep conversation. It, it is a lot of like... Um, yeah, how much, how much do you buy into it and stuff like that of of like what's being done and and I guess I could sort of tell you later on, <laughs> later on post tomorrow. Volunteer yeah. yourself, volunteer Tash, yourself. Tash, Tash you. really wants me to like go up on stage. She was you like, should. Tash said if they tr- if if she tries to pick her, she will flat out refuse because <laughs> she's no, she said there's no way I'm going on stage. But she was like, I want you to go on because I just want want <laughs> to see what happens. So. I mean, if it does, then I'll... Get, get a first-hand account. That, that's yeah. what we need. Someone to tell us exactly what it's like. Yeah. Luke, we are viewing into the dangerous realm of not doing a podcast and just having a normal conversation between me and you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did think that. Maybe, maybe we should get back on topic. Uh, maybe... This is very much just me and you talking. <laughs> maybe, maybe sometime in this millennium we should. <laughs> So this is episode four of season seven, entitled Millennium. Um, it was directed by Thomas J. Wright, which is a first, I think. I don't think we've ever seen him before directing this. Doesn't ring a bell now. Um, I think he might be a Millennium director. Uh, oh, I forgot about the Millennium show. Yeah, of course. Um, so was is this directly tied? Yes. It could have just been like because of the Millennium. Yeah, so th- this is... There's a lot of like production notes, but I'll, basically, this is the the ending of Millennium. Oh, okay. So Millennium has already been going on at this point. Yeah, yeah. I wonder whether that detracts at all from the episode. Whether I needed to watch. I definitely sensed a bit of hollowness. You know what I mean to the to the story. Yeah. You know what? I completely forgot it was a show. Uh, not that I forgot. It. I just didn't put it in my, out of my mind because I thought, oh, Millennium. It's like. It's because it's the millennium. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's why it's titled that. And then I didn't even think about it, but I did think, wonder, like, it gets glossed over, like, very quickly about, like, oh, there's these millennium guys, it, and that's th- it, you know what I mean? In in a much, much smaller scale, this kind of feels like um, if you watched uh, Endgame without watching any of the other uh, ones, it's fine on its own, but when these big things that tie into, like, stuff that's happened years and years ago, happen you don't get that kind of like oh this is because of this guy you know what I mean like it kind of yes. just goes oh yeah 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 it's uh it's Frank Black like you just say like, oh cool you know what I mean like yeah, there's no yeah. there's no like whereas I, I wrote it down later on in the notes and we'll get to this part when he appears and like they're talking to him this feels it like felt if, like a big moment didn't yeah it? it felt like but this was meant to be a big deal yeah <laughs> yeah but it, care it less. definitely wasn't yeah, <laughs> yeah. not to not not to for us yeah yeah no exactly. I can I, I we haven't watched Millennium, so yeah, yeah. yeah, we can only give our our honest opinion of what we thought. And I didn't, I didn't think it was bad, but like mm-hmm. when he turned around, it was very much a, oh my god, I can't believe it's him. It was, it was a, um, a big reveal, and like I was like, <laughs> it cool. was, a, uh, it was a bigger real reveal for me because it's the same guy who plays Bishop in Aliens. I was like, oh, it's Bishop from Aliens. <laughs> well, there you go, nice. <laughs> um, and then yeah, I was like, oh, he's, he's, he's some other guy apparently. But anyway, <laughs> right, we, we digress. We've only talked about the director here. <laughs> um, it was written by Vince Gilligan and Frank Spotnitz, and the original air date was November the twenty eighth, nineteen ninety nine. Um, which I think is funny because they they doing this like new year's episode i thought oh maybe it's around like sort of december time and i f- forgot that no we started like the beginning of november so we're not that yeah. far into it yet um so we start uh and we see a widow at her husband's funeral we find out this guy is a former fbi agent called raymond crouch um and it's quite close to to the mill- the start of the millennium um or the new millennium uh it's december 21st 1999 um and we see 
this guy approach her at the funeral, um, a guy called Mark Johnson, uh, who claimed that he's worked with her husband uh, and uh, that he'll be, that'll, he'll be missed. Um, they sort of hint as well, and we find out later on that this guy committed suicide um, uh, because she's mentioning that he didn't even leave a note or anything yeah. to, to say why he did this. Um, after this scene, we see all the mourners leave and uh, Johnson's like hiding in the funeral parlor. <laughs> he goes over to the body, undresses... Which my alarm bells are going off straight away. I was like, "What is this episode of it?" Well, first of all, let's uh, let's address the zombie in the room. <laughs> what sort of treatment was this guy given? I uh, yeah, I thought that. <laughs> like, thank God it wasn't open casket. Is all I can say. <laughs> yeah, it looks like I know. Usually, they they do a lot to make it look like you know they're they're still not as, still as, alive, uh, but alive as possible. It goes yeah. blue. <laughs> Like, uh, I don't know. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what is this? <laughs> what? That can't be. I mean, I know there's got to be, like, like you know, people that like, die from, like, horrific injuries yeah, or, yeah, like, yeah. something like that. There's got to be, I understand that you can't, like, put someone back together for the sake of it. Yeah. Uh, there's a, like, a certain point where you can't. Yeah, there's a, there's not much you can do. But this guy just looked like, oh, well. He, he's a zombie. Yeah. He's a zombie in a, in a, in a casket. And <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it was genuinely, when he, he's undressing him, it's genuinely, like, almost makes you heave. It's yeah, like, yeah. really good makeup because it looks disgusting. And all the sound effects as well, I think, make it yeah. quite good. It's like that cracking, like, cracking of, like, bones and, like, joints and, like, the dry skin and stuff like that. It, it, it genuinely is disgusting, especially when he's, like, putting, he just picks up the badge that he had on him and just put, pops it in his mouth while he's, like, working away. And it's like, this is a bit gross, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, bits bit strange. Uh, and then we see him uh, hand a, a, a phone or give this phone to the dead the dead body. Uh, and then we we see that we're a, a week later. Uh, Johnson is waiting outside the uh, cemetery, and his phone rings, and he walks over to the grave with a shovel. So we have some kind of resurrection story here going on. Um, what yeah. do you think of this intro? Thought, oh, we're gonna get zombies. Yes, um, you weren't disappointed. Um, that's what I thought. I thought, yeah, it's gonna be a zombie episode. I didn't, I didn't quite take the sort of the necromancy angle mm. they go for. I didn't quite expect that. Um, but yeah, I thought, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be zombies. I thought to myself as well, um, what happens if the first thing he presses was back and he didn't have the number? <laughs> yeah, he's knackered. Then that's a that's a risk you gotta take. Yes. Have you ever seen that? Um, Ryan Reynolds film where he's trapped in the coffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it keeps like filling with like dirt or something like that at the end. Yeah, yeah. It, it's all one shot inside yeah. the coffin. I, I don't know why I brought that up other than the fact that it's like, oh, that's a cool film. Isn't it? <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> I like really like the film. concept. What? It's kind of like that French film, The Vanishing. The Vanishing? Is it French? I don't know if it's French actually. Um, but it's 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 like a, 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 a world cinema um, where uh, I guess I guess it's spoiling the film. Um, <laughs> should I should I just watch it? Oh, maybe. Should we just, should we just list other films that we like? Uh, pff, I like Saving Private Ryan. That's good. No, good no film. coffins in that, unfortunately. But uh, no, oh, I bet actually, there is. is. Yeah, yeah. I say yeah, unfortunately. I Don't I say unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Wish there were more deaths in World War Two. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bold stance. I know. To take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. Anyway, yeah. I mean, it, especially when we see this zombie later on as well, like his. He's not exactly all together. Yeah, he somehow manages to make a phone call and everything to this guy, or at least press ring. Yeah, yeah. I suppose he just puts his thumb on the button. So I suppose like it's maybe just, he's just he's hoping for the right movement. Yeah. Because yeah. I thought to myself like maybe he was gonna like wake up fully conscious, look at the phone, and go, okay, I've got to call this. Number. Yeah, I I thought it was yeah he was gonna be like a full on normal. But it doesn't person. seem like that. No, definitely not. Um. So after we the intro, we see that uh, Mulder and Scully are um, examining this uh, empty grave now. Um, we get a sheriff basically give us a load of exposition, telling us exactly what's happened here. Um, and they also find evidence in this uh, coffin that there's like chlorine at the, the sort of line in, and there's um, like marks, like it, it's like green luminescent marks, but I don't know if that's just like chemicals used for fingerprinting or something. I like think that. it is. Yeah. yeah. But they, they find like evidence that it make it appear that somebody broke out of the, the coffin. Um, Scully thinks 
maybe somebody's made it look like that, like they've just dug up the body and made it look like they've dug themselves out. Um, but we see this, um, uh, what's it, guy, this Johnson guy driving away, and then we see in the back of his car like a an arm and a groan um, up against the back window. So we know at this point this is a zombie. Um, it's got yeah. all the hallmarks of a, of a classic zombie. He's also constantly reciting religious scripture, which gives you that sort of necromancy vibe. Yeah, yeah, and and which comes into play in the rest of the plot, I guess. It um, certainly does, yeah. Um, we see back at the FBI building, we see uh, Skinner giving this uh, sort of roundtable briefing on what's happened uh, and the sort of theories of what uh, of what's happened here. Uh, Mulder has his own theory, and he goes straight in with necromancy. Um, I believe uh, this dead body's been summoned because there's um, a circle in uh, goat's blood, I think he says. I don't know if we find that, that out later or if it's in this part, but yeah, we find a circle in goat's blood, which that's pretty uh, demonic <laughs> of yeah. two things I can think of. Um, so Skinner uh, sort of uh, asks the others to leave and takes uh, Mulder and Scully aside. And explains that this uh, this guy, this uh, Crouch, was actually part of the Millennium Group, uh, which is, was an organization made up of former FBI agents. And basically goes through the, the rundown of what this Millennium Group is. Definitely feels like a recap. Yeah, looking back at it now, it very much feels like a... I'm going to explain this series in two minutes. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it feels like a primer on everything that you need to know to, to get up to speed with it. So for people who haven't seen Millennium, which I, uh, may, I don't know, maybe it's, I don't know how popular it is, to be honest, but basically we're, we're, we're to believe that it's FBI agents that were, what are they again? So like they're, they're informants, but also like they took it into their own hands. Yeah. Well, I, so they're, they're part of this group that, that sort of have this belief about the end of the world, don't they? Or something like that. I don't know if we find out ha- that in this, this part, but they sort of help local law enforcement. Yes. On their own backs, not in a government capacity. Yes, yeah. But they, then, but then they started using it for their own, like nefarious means. That's what yeah. Skinner says, anyway. Basically, yeah. And um, we find out some information on uh, a member of this group or a former member of this group called Frank Black, um, who was a criminal profiler. And um, uh, Skinner basically tells them to to go and track down this guy, who is. Um, Spending some time in, I don't know if it's, I'm not sure if it's, if it's a mental institution institution or if it's like a sanitarium, because there's some ones where you can voluntary, voluntarily check yourself in. Well, he does voluntarily check himself out yeah, later, yeah. Yes, so yeah. um, I assume it's, yeah, yeah. all voluntary. And he, and he also like makes a few comments about how he, the reason why he's there is he doesn't want to be involved. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, this is, uh, I can't remember the guy's, the actor's name, I think it's Lance... Henriksen, maybe I, I, mm-hmm. that sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. But yeah, he, he, as I, as when I saw him, it, it would be a big deal for anyone to watch Millennium. But yeah, I just thought, oh, it's Bishop from Alien. <laughs> um, and yeah, we we find out more about him uh, that he's checked himself in here. He's reluctant to get involved, mainly because he's in a kind of custody battle for with for his daughter at the moment. And the the more he gets involved in this. The more likelihood, uh, the more likely it's going to be that he's going to lose his daughter. So he just wants to just completely distance himself and show that he's a fit father. Um, so he's got more of a a leg to stand on, so to speak. Yeah, he does give a cryptic clue though. Yes, he he's watching a game of football and he mentions one eighteen or something like that. It's first and eighteenth. Yeah, which Mulder at the time thinks so. It's a uh, uh, football. Um, what is it? Yeah, the yard line, isn't it, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, so he's a bit confused by that. Meanwhile, we see uh, Johnson is changing a tire in his truck um, because it's broke down or something's happened to it, and uh, a police officer finds him, um, tries to help him out, but he notices a, a weird smell. Goes to the back of the car, uh, and um, basically gets attacked by this zombie and killed. Um, we then see that this missing officer is found later on, or Mulder and Scully find him with the help of local law enforcement, and they find his corpse with... I thought it was just a head. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, it might have been. I did, I did. No, it wasn't, because he oh, comes yeah, alive yeah. later, yeah, doesn't yeah, cause we see his full... yeah, we see his... But like, you, you, it looked like it was just a, a, a head. Yeah, buried, basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
we notice that its mouth has been stapled shut and Mulder finds like a, a piece of paper in there. And when he reads out the, the religious scripture on it, we find out that this is from, I can't remember the book, but it's the first verse 18th passage, which is what he was talking about. So yeah, this is a cryptic yeah. clue. So they figure out he is on on their side. He yes. is willing to help us in some capacity. Yeah, he just doesn't want it to be overt, so he gets dragged into it. I did like exactly. this. I like this bit as well, because it's a zombie story now, but it's kind of more, kind of like magic, like, you know what I mean? Like, obviously not, as, uh, there's no, I guess it Although is. Although like, necromancy degree, is yeah, magic. Yeah, 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 to a degree, yeah. So I, I liked it, this kind of, like, magic sort of story, whereas usually X-Files is more sci-fi in nature, so usually there'd be some kind of, like, I don't know, like a parasite or something that's doing it, or something like that. So it's, it was interesting to see this more, um, yeah, religious and magical story to it. Um, yeah. But anyway, they go back to Frank, uh, and he does agree to help them with his investigation at this point. Kind of reluctantly. Reluctantly, yeah. But <laughs> like, yeah. it's weird. He he doesn't have to help, but like, it's like this need to help. Do you know what I mean? Like, where it's like he doesn't. He keeps saying he doesn't want to, and he just wants to be left alone. And then every time they're about to walk away, he's like, "Don't forget to check under the bed." Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, he, he's like, he doesn't need to say anything. He's won, and then he has to drag himself back in. It definitely feels like he. Um, he does actually want to help. Uh, like, I think he might feel a responsibility to yeah, help. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, probably for, maybe if we'd seen all the episodes of Millennium, we would realise he has some kind of reasoning for wanting to help, but again, we're just sort of... We haven't, and so we don't care. Yeah, yeah pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we find out from him agreeing to help now that this Millennium group, um, he was a part of it, and he left because they have this kind of like conspiracy to bring about the end of the world by basically killing themselves on the dawn of the new millennium. And they have, they'd sort of become the four horsemen of the apocalypse is what they mention. Um, yeah. Uh, I like at this point as well. Um, <laughs> uh, Scully says, well, it, it doesn't make sense because uh, this isn't the start. Of, 2000's not the start of the new millennium. 2001 is the start of the new millenni- millennium. Oh, that's hard to say. And um, Mulder just says, nobody likes a math ski. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just thought it was a, a, a fun sort of uh, bit of it's, levity in this episode. It, it's the same vibe as, do you remember, I think it was 2004 when like the Mayan calendar said everywhere in the world was going to end. Yeah. yeah. Or and, 2012, wasn't it? It was 2012. Yeah. It was, you're right, it was 2012. And the Mayan calendar said the world was going to end. And you had all these people going... Yeah, but the Mayan calendar didn't have leap years. And so, really, if you think about it, it's already come and gone. So, we know there was. And I was like, ah, oh, it's just a bit of fun. Yeah. You know, just enjoy it. <laughs> it's just the end of the world. It's a bit of fun. It's a bit of fun. <laughs> just have a laugh. Have a laugh. <laughs> or, <laughs> didn't some people like sell insurance for their pets and stuff like that? Like, oh, get looked after <laughs> after the dude, rapture. When there's, when there's disasters or when there's. The, when whenever there's disasters, whenever there's people that are, are genuinely scared and fear and like in fear, there's always people willing to take money off them. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, it brings out the hustlers, and yeah, I, like people, people literally spend like millions trying to like 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 you say for bunkers for stuff for them and their family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and crazy. Nothing was ever going to be there. You know what I mean? It was. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. Um. So, yeah, acting on the information that uh, Frank gave them, um, they decide to um, to find this Johnson guy because uh, they, they think he's the one orchestrating it all. Um, they uh, also realise that the the corpse that they found um, is a reanimated zombie now, basically, and they need yeah. to sort of stop it from being... Um, be, uh, having zombie. the autopsy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, having the autopsy. So... Um, <laughs> He's telling the, the the best bit is is uh, Mulder says whatever you do make sure they don't take the staples out cut straight to uh, pulling the staples out of this like yeah this mess. which you knew is going to yeah. happen that's such a great great idea um, there's a lot of shots like that which is like quite verging on the like verging on funny like yeah, verging yeah. on comical which it wasn't they didn't quite go down that route but there was this scene there was a scene right at the beginning as well where. Um, they're checking out the um the grave, mm, yeah, and yeah. Scully like peers over the grave and says, "I've heard you've been like 
telling spreading rumors again. Yeah. And then Mulder's head just pops, pops up from yeah. inside yeah. the grave. And it's just like I love like little yeah. experimental shots like that. Yeah, yeah, they're just like proper with that one as well, because it's so in your face, it's so like absurd. It's yeah. Kind of, it's kind of like that one where um what was it, Humbug where everything was close up and it just adds to this like sort of weird feel, surreal feel. Yeah, there, yeah, exactly. It? Um but yeah, we find out why you shouldn't take the staples out. Um, he's, his mouth is packed with salt as well, which we find out this is like a protection. We do see earlier on, um, uh, what's his name? Johnson makes a ring of salt around himself when that zombie attacks the the police officer, which we find out is a defense against them. Yes. Um, and because she scoops out all this salt and takes out the, the staples, this corpse comes back to life, attacks the the woman who's doing the autopsy i don't know if she's killed i think she is i'm not 100 yeah. sure or just mm. injured she doesn't turn not, into a zombie yeah, I'm so sure i'm not so. sure but anyway she gets attacked and scully arriving to try and stop her also gets attacked but we see that johnson arrives and well first of all scully fires three rounds into the zombie's chest yeah to no effect yeah it does well. absolutely nothing uh classic zombie rules in effect on this one yeah, and again, you know what? This is a lot of zombie films that does this. Um, it annoys me though. Can we not just call it what it is? Can we not just say zombies? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, no, it's like everyone's like rules. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Are we are we to believe that zombie films don't exist in this universe? Yeah. Because everyone knows just shoot them in the head. Like, yeah. why wouldn't that be the first or, thing? Or that at you least, do? least try. Yeah, and if it didn't work, you go okay. Zombie rules don't work on this one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was just a, a fictional film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't use the Z word that's all I ever think of. <laughs> um, but yeah Scully uh, arrives as well is attacked and uh, yeah shoot, shoots this guy uh, to, which does nothing and um, yeah then we see Johnson arrives and he sort of I think he protects Scully or at least stops her from being killed by this, this zombie um, yeah, he shoots it in the air. He kills it. Oh, did he kill it? Yeah, I thought. I, yeah, yeah. I think I was taking notes at this point. So yeah, I didn't. He, he, it's he, he has, they they say it's one he one round in, into the head. Yeah, yeah. He killed it. Um. So yeah, he he stops it at this point, and um, yeah, we see uh, uh Skinner uh basically uh arrive uh after this happened um, basically explaining that they've got no idea of how this this uh deputy uh came back from the dead. Um, but Mulder predicted that it would happen. Um, so again, Mulder is spot on. Necromancy was correct. Yeah. Um, and they also mentioned they can't get in touch with, uh, I, I don't know if they mentioned it here, but they, they sort of can't get in touch with Mulder. Um, and this, we see why, why that's the case. Um, because Mulder's at Mark's Johnson's home. Yeah. Uh, and he, we find that he doesn't have any, uh, his, his Nokia phone, <laughs> times. no cell service yeah, no cell service yeah he can't get a call so he's just going to carry on doing his investigation um he finds a big bag of salt in his uh in his rubbish and uh goes into the the home notices all these like taxidermy sort of uh animals and yeah also... they mention that like when um flank's given like a sort of a description of what the killer would be like. He said he'd, he'd probably be isolated, which he is. He'd probably have like no trespassing signs because he needs a lot of rooms to his work, mm-hmm. and he'd also be like l- l- used to death. Yes, so he, yeah. he figured like maybe he'd live in a funeral home, but actually it was a, a taxidermy. Taxidermy, yeah. Um, so yeah, we see all these like uh, dead animals everywhere, and we also notice that there's a barricaded door going into the uh, the cellar. Um, Don't go in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Every rule of horror tells you. It's barricaded for a reason, most likely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not even hover. That's yeah. just logic. That's just normal life logic. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I want to put this as a PSA, a public service announcement for all listeners and most wanted. If you see a barricaded door, leave it barricaded. Yeah. Or if you want to go in, have about 50 people go in with you because <laughs> you've got a good chance then, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, Mulder doesn't heed our advice. Uh, he goes down. Um, and we get this really good scene. I, I really enjoyed this for the, that sort of classic sort of scares on it. Uh, so they go into this basement and we see the dirt underneath uh, his feet start moving and all these like zombies just literally rise out of the ground. Um, he tries to run uh, and uh, go back out where he, um, the barricaded door. But we see Johnson there just lock the door on him. 
Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we're sort of left with Mulder trapped in this basement uh, as sort of it goes to to break. Um, anything you you thought about this this sort of horror Great, I, Just I thought it was a good horror setup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, I think they do a good job of sort of drawing the line between like this sort of religious sort of I don't I don't like the apocalypse angle and it just being a, a general zombie flick. And I think they do sort of tread the line really well of going in between mm. those, especially with the two storylines, with you've got your Mulder and your Scully, um, and Scully sort of more investigating that one side of things, where Mulder's yeah. trapped in the zombie side. Yeah, um, yeah. I thought, I thought, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I really enjoyed. Yeah. It. I, I, I was enjoying the. It's it's over the top tension, but that's what a zombie film is. Oh that's yeah, the genre. yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that being trapped in with yeah, exactly. Things, yeah. And it's always like it's. The whole genre relies on stupid decisions for one, and like the like horrendous misfortune. Like everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yeah, and yeah, of course definitely. he was going to close the door. And yeah, of course he was, because that's what happens in every zombie film. Hundred percent, something will go wrong, and you'll get trapped with fifty of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did like as well. Yeah, that just like practical effect of the the hands coming out of the dirt and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just yeah, that classic sort of rising from the ground. Um, yeah, I thought it was quite cool. Um, we see Scully go back to uh, beat Frank, uh, and he uh, she's trying to get some more help um, because they can't get in touch with Mulder um, and to see if he can figure out any more uh, or, or can actually help them. So she asks if this Millennium Group can actually bring the apop- bring about the apocalypse, uh, and he said that he studied their beliefs, but he doesn't actually think that they can do it. It's just some theory that they have um so scully at this point leaves um with the information she's got and at this he point also, i just want to interrupt with that with he also um seemed very much aware of what they could do with like bringing back the dead and the zombies yeah and once he realized that scully had been attacked by one that was the turning point for him going oh, I'm, i need to help now yeah. i need to sort of start you know, weighing it a little bit more freely rather than being cryptic. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, he does spring into action because um, yeah. he checks himself out of the hospital. Now, quick question here, it's a bit of a side note. Did you recognise the actor who he asks who he can check himself out? I did. Don't know her name. I, so, I know the actress, but yeah. I don't know her name. So, uh, immediately I saw her and I was like, she looks familiar. And then he called her Octavia. And I was like, it's not Octavia Spencer, is it? I was like, it can't be. Look at it. It's it's Octavia Spencer, who was in uh, what? What's it? Which is in? Um, she's in tons of films. So know. many films, yeah. The, you know what? I'm just on IMDb here. <laughs> what's she in? The Shape of Water. She's in Shape of Water. She's in. Uh, what's the the film there where it's about the uh, scientists, like um, the NASA scientists? The NASA scientists, yeah. Yeah, was that's that. what I was thinking of. She's in there. Um, um, so we've got so many things. Encounter, Thunder Force, Super Intelligence, The Witches, <laughs> Doolittle. I mean, she's been in lots yeah, of films. Lots. Like this is like five, six films a year. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Shape of Water, like you said, Gifted, Small Town Crime, The Shark, Hidden Figures, Bad Santa Two, Car Dogs, Car Dogs, Car Dogs. Now that's the kind of film I want to watch. <laughs> Malcolm is a brilliant, callous businessman who is a vicious, overbearing father. Mark is the sales manager at Chamberlain Auto, the dealership that promises to do whatever it takes to put you in a new car. But on a scorching hot Saturday in the middle of the Phoenix summer, this just doesn't even sound fun. Yeah, what's where's the dogs? Where's the dogs? <laughs> we you promised us car dogs. I wanted dogs in cars. Oh, yeah, some kind of like rally with a car driving. That would that would. Particularly be uh, what I'd be after with a, with a dog driving. You don't yeah. want a car driving a car. That's insane. Wow, well, that's ridiculous. Well, I mean, <laughs> Disney, Disney, they did that, didn't they? <laughs> no, I mean, they were the cars didn't get into other cars, cars to, to drive. drive. Yes, yeah. the cars. Seems, that's, sorry, yeah, the cars were disgusting. sentient. That was it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um, okay. Just, so it would take anything away from this episode. Don't watch car dogs. That sounds <laughs> yeah. Like car, watch, watch cars or. Dogs. Uh, there's probably dogs. a film about dogs. <laughs> somewhere. It's just called Dogs. I prefer dog cars. Dog cars, yeah. Now, dog cars is a film and a half. That's, that's dumb and dumber, isn't it? <laughs> um, 
Have you heard? Sorry, this is a tangent. So just cars popped into me. Have you heard the theory that, uh, in Cars that um, World War Two actually happened in the Cars universe? No. There's a spin-off called Planes, um, and uh, in it, his like <clears throat> great grandfather or something like that uh, flew in fighter pilot missions. Uh, they don't specifically say World War Two, but it's in a he's a spit. Uh, it's like a not a Spitfire, a Mustang, like an American fighter plane. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So does that mean World War Two happened? <laughs> what was the it's catalyst big... for Cars World War II? <laughs> I guess there's a lot of questions. <laughs> um, what was the catalyst? Jesus Christ! Yeah, it, oh. I mean, it means it really does throw up some like, um, it yeah, it does really, really interesting questions for the cards. But anyway, yeah, we digress. Um, this is Octavia Spencer. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, he checks himself out, and we see um, Maldino in the basement, and he's got a circle of salt around him, so he's figured out this. Um, that salt protects him and all the undead are actually around him sort of just staring at him uh sort of waiting to attack uh basically and we see uh johnson is just sort of watching him as uh, sort of seeing what's what's happening through the through the window um we see frank uh actually just go straight to uh johnson's house so obviously yeah. he knows more about much more about it than he's than he's laying on, he let on. yeah yeah, yeah. And um, Johnson, at this point, is so excited to see him. Um, he explains that um, one of the guys has been killed um, because Mulder shot him when he first went down there. Um, and so they need a fourth person to sort of replace this guy who's been shot. Uh, and he thinks that Frank can be the fourth person so that he's going to like kill himself, basically. Yeah. Um, he had, uh, Frank says that he sent Mulder here, um, but he can't... You know, he, he was trying to fight against the Millennium Group, but he, he can't leave it behind and he uh, needs to help them, especially now that he's seen that the dead are arising. Trying to trick him, basically. I mean, at this point, yeah. we, we don't know that he's trying to tri- trick him. He could be joining him. I, I think it was fairly obvious, but yes, yeah, like yeah. He, as, as, a, as a viewer, I suppose they tried to subvert your expectations, but I, I, I think it was pretty obvious what he was doing from the start. Yeah, I mean, I never got a sense that he was a bad guy in this. Scene. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it seemed obvious that he was going to turn turn the uh, the tables on him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Johnson gives him a gun so he can sort of kill himself, and Frank turns it on him um, and holds him up. Um, at the same time, Scully is uh, on the phone to Skinner, finds that all the phone calls that uh, this guy was doing, because we find out that he'd basically been resurrecting different people from different uh, cities in America um, yeah. from the earlier on investigation. Um, and yeah, all these phone calls uh, relate to a number tied to this same address. Uh, so Scully heads to that address. Um, we see Frank tie up Mark um and going to the the basement, and this guy is just absolutely raving that uh, you know he needs to do this because you know there's there's evil in the world, and he needs to stop it. Yeah, like a fanatic, basically. It was very cultish. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Frank goes into the basement, and he speaks to Mulder. Um, he asks him if he's okay and everything, and Mulder tells him that you've got to aim for the head uh, to take these out. I, f- I think the line he uses is very similar to like um, something that's from. Night of the Living Dead. Um, yeah, it sounds like the exact same like sort of verbiage that he uses in there, um, which makes sense when I read the production notes later. Okay. Um, um, yeah. So he he finds that the zombies have sort of hid hid themselves. So he throws these like flares down there and uh, goes in, kills one of the zombies. One thing that I noticed, he's got like a revolver, and he just starts like absolutely unloading shots onto this one zombie, and I'm like, so you know the spores. <laughs> Four zombies down here, and you've just wasted three bullets. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I mean, you've got maybe six the, rounds. Yeah, maybe it's a bad shot, and they just they just kept missing. But it's kind of just like I don't know. Just wait till they're really close, and just like get for the head. Anyway, um, yeah, um, he uh, another zombie attacks him and knocks the gun to the side. Mulder picks it up and shoots at that that cre- uh, that uh, zombie. And then we see the final one. Uh, he sort of charges Mulder, but funnily enough, he's run out of bullets. Yeah. And two should come to the rescue, but Scully, who uh, shoots the last zombie, and yeah. uh, 
everybody's saved. Um, job well done. Job, job well, well done, done yeah. to you. Uh, Scully just arrives in the nick of time. So, yeah, all good. Then we go to the final scene and we see uh, we're in a hospital room and Frank is uh, watching the um, the New Year's Tuesday. Millennium. So, yeah, the yeah, millennium. Millennium coming in. Do you remember where you were on the millennium? I do. I was eight years old. I was um, on a farm. My mm. family, um, we, we booked like a cottage. It was a cottage on a farm where you could like help out with like the farmyard tasks and stuff like that. I've t- have I told the story on the? I can't remember. I'm not sure. Do you know what? The, I mean, I, I imagine we just retell stories all the time on this. I'm almost certain we do. Yeah. You know those th- You know those moments in life where you stay up thinking about, mm. and it like just haunts you to your core. Yeah, hundred percent. And like it just like, it's ridiculous moments that don't matter, but like they just, they stay with you. <laughs> we had this bear, and it was the Millennium Bear, right? Yeah, and. So this is what the bear did. I'll, I'll, I'll recreate it for you. The bear laughed with <laughs> 10, 9, 8, and it would count down and then yeah. Happy New Year. It was like yeah. a, and it had like 2,000 on it and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was obsessed with this bear on the way up to New Year to the point where I timed with a stopwatch I can see how what's long. Happening. How long the laughs were, yeah. so that the bear could count down with us to the new year. At right? eight years old, you were timing it skint. <laughs> I, I, sorry, sorry, I just coughed. Oh, no, no, <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Um, I counted, so I, I literally timed it was six seconds the laugh. I remember, and this is like, it haunts me. I was eight years old, and I still remember this. Six seconds the laugh, and then obviously ten seconds until the new year so i knew 16 seconds before new year if i clicked that we'd be we'd be golden we could count down with this teddy bear and i i, I ran i ran tests i ran tests when all the time i was in the cottage i ran tests every night couldn't wait couldn't wait for the millennium and then millennium hit and my younger sister said i want to go and i said no and my mom said be fair you've had it all week Give your sister a go. And so I said, okay, you take it, but you've got to press it at 16 seconds. Pre- make sure to press it at 16 seconds. The millennium <laughs> like- came and went, Luke. The millennium <laughs> came and went, and the bear still hadn't laughed. And then what makes it even worse was everyone said Happy New Year, and all I heard was, ha, 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 ten, it, nine. It, it laughed at you, it mocked you. <laughs> To this day, I if, if ever I can't sleep, I think about that moment. It haunts me. So thanks for bringing this up, Luke. Uh, yeah, I have, I have a much less dark millennium. <laughs> the millennium, I'll never forget the millennium. <laughs> Deary me. God. I, I, didn't tell, I didn't say it was a good story. <laughs> I'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to hear what your story was. Uh, my, my, what did you be, do the Mike could be summarised. We, we used to go around my uncle's for um, uh, for New Year's, uh, and this was the year that he thought it would be a good idea to let all of the kids mix him a drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty oh, sure we dear. nearly killed him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I gave him, I'm sure we gave him a pint of... We didn't measure. Like, we were just kids. We didn't know. We did yeah. well, we weren't drinking. We were just like, oh, it's fine. It's just, you know, it smells like... He was stuff. playing barman for the night. Exactly, exactly. We gave him a mixed drink, which was a pint glass full of whiskey, different types of rum, WKD, uh, some Jesus. beer. Um, uh, there was a bit of cider, mainly spirits. Imagine a pint yeah. of spirits. That uh, sounds horrendous. We gave him that at 8 o'clock. I don't know if he made it to the New Year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just remember him falling asleep on a bin bag. <laughs> I don't know what time that was, but yeah, that was that was my millennium <laughs> memory. Wow. Yeah. So we've both had haunting experiences. <laughs> I, 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 to be honest, I, I, I will never forget that for just just the good times of it. It was just the easiest New Year's. <laughs> yeah, didn't yeah, worry about it. Um. Anyway, yes. Uh, millennium. This is also a good millennium. It is. It is a very good millennium. Um, so we see that uh, Frank is watching the Dick Clark um, ball uh, drop, which we don't get over here. We 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 get um we get the hootenanny. Oh, no, I, I we I mean 
Yeah, we've got our own traditions over yeah. the year. We got. I, I think we've got like um because you've, you've got in America you've got like um Times Square yeah, yeah, the air yeah. and all that sort of stuff. We've got the Thames, the fireworks over the Thames. Yeah, think, yeah, true. I should say we've got um the Hootin' Nanny, which is <laughs> again it's a classic. Yeah. It's a, it is a classic. Although it's been spoiled a lot lately when I realised that they filmed that in like November. The, all that's all around the world. All yeah. the, those shows are filmed like months before. Yeah, yeah. It's just so depressing. But anyway, right. Let's stop depressing ourselves about the new year. Um, okay, we're coming up to a monumental part of X Files <laughs> yeah. history, and everyone's looking forward to us talking about this part. Yeah. And then we've gone on sidetracks for about ten minutes. Yeah, we've really brought the mood down. So let's let's continue. <laughs> I, I, I will get back on track. I'll, I'll never forget that bear. <laughs> You sound like the guy from Fallout who keeps talking about war never changing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder whether I can find that bear. <laughs> People are like, get on with it! Oh, no, 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 hang on. <laughs> you will wait. You will wait for this. Um, wait there. D- talks. 2000 Millennium Bear Talks? I don't know. Oh, it could be that. It might be that one with um, vintage, vintage Millennium Tickle Wiggle Talking Soft Toy. That, that rings a bell. Yeah. You'd, I'd, I'd have thought you'd have like a photo identical memory of this bear. Um, not so much the bear; it was more like the, the feeling, <laughs> <laughs> the um, sound. Just bear with me because I want to see. Can, can I get a video of this? Can I get a video of this? What it sounded like? Hang on, I found it. Can you hear that? I can't hear it. No. Okay. How do I do this? Okay. Maybe just hold the earphones up to the to the microphone. I'll okay, t- I'm so. So I found. So it, this is it. This is it, right? Oh my god! This is haunting memories right here. Okay, so I'm gonna relive this live. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna hold the headphones up. I don't know what the sound quality yeah. is gonna be we'll, like. We'll, so we're we'll gonna, see, yeah, we'll see what it sounds like. Yeah, we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, so hang on. That's like I the don't... most mocking voice I could think of to be taunted with as well. I don't think I want to do this podcast anymore. <laughs> right at this point, we end it. I think, yeah, right at this point, I think I just want to sit in my room, in a dark room, and just rock for, like, I'm days. Gonna, I think I think if I ever need to, like, sort of... <laughs> this sounds really dark. Put you in your place. I'm just going to send you that clip. <laughs> send you to a spiral. The... As the problem is, I thought it said Happy New Millennium. It says Welcome to the Year 2000. So yeah. even if I'm lucky enough to make it to 3000, I can't use it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine. Okay, how good would you be? You've lived for another thousand years and you still get the timing wrong because of your <laughs> arthritis see bones and smell like that. I can't believe I found that. Oh. That is. That is horrendous. That is sent shivers down my spine. Just relived a nightmare. <laughs> anyway, what happened, to, what happened to this episode, Luke? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we see all this uh, the New Year stuff, and um, Scully shows up uh, as we see Mulder's been sort of uh, he's injured from this fight, so he's in the hospital, um, and uh, we find out that Mark Johnson's in the psych ward now. Um, and we also see that Frank's daughter has been sent in uh, and they sort of embrace and sort of have this sort of reconciliation. Not reconciliation. Yeah, they're it's not a nice moment. No, yeah, a nice moment. And again, it's one of those things where I think if you know the story and the characters, maybe this is a bigger deal than, than what Possibly, we... Possibly, but again, we don't know whether it is or not. Like, yeah, we yeah, literally exactly. don't know, so... Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Frank says he's goodbyes. But they, they ask him if he's going to stay and watch the... Uh, the, the ball drop, and he's like, no, I just want to go home, basically. Uh, so he leaves, and then we see the ball drop, and it's the year 2000, and then you know it's coming, but you get this really, really long sort of, like, lingering stare between Mulder and Scully, and then Mulder just turns in and kisses her, and we finally, it's finally happened. Was you shocked? Was you shocked? 
I was shocked it happened in this episode. I thought it was going to be something. I, I I mean, at the time, I was like, oh, it's going to happen now because it's like they lingered on it for so long. I was like, it's going to happen. I didn't think so because they, they've done this before. They've done this before. They look at each other and like they look at each other's lips and mm. like they go close and then they end up just kissing each other's forehead or cheek or something like that. So I, I, all the way through, I was like, it's not going to happen now. Like, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And then it does. Does this count, though? It's a New Year's kiss. Does it count? I don't know. <laughs> I mean... It's a this, kiss, though, This is it? the first actual time that you have. Like, because we've had all the near misses of, like, when it wasn't Mulder, it was somebody inhabiting Mulder's body. Then, or... Yeah. yeah, it was Mulder's body. Then we had the one where the bee ruined it. Um, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> stuff so like there was one a couple of episodes ago where, like, they were close, but then... You yeah, know, like, difference of... Like, so I think this is the actual first kiss, yeah. Um, and obviously it's a New Year's kiss, but I definitely feel like... There's more to it than that, obviously. I think with everything that's gone on before, you know, there's more to it. You love to see it. You do. You do. I've um, been waiting for... I, but I don't think these... I don't think it's like a, oh, let's be together now, kiss. No, no, no. no. That's this, the problem. That's what I'm waiting for. I think this is... This and, like, the end of the second episode is just them finally just admitting the, uh, the, the way that they feel, basically. That's the way I sort of got it. Is it's not like we're now boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> it's like we're we're both, yeah. Maybe not love. Maybe I don't know. I, I can't. I can't really say at this point. But there definitely is that feeling between the two of them. Yeah, it's you know what it was for me. It's subtle different. It's the he puts his arm right around her and like mm. holds her close, walking out straight afterwards. Yeah, it just yeah. felt it felt like more, but I just don't think it's going to be more right yeah. now. I, did I don't know. I hope it is. I hope it is. Yeah, yeah. I did like after they after they did it as well. It definitely felt like a meta line. Is um, Mulder says, uh, "See, the world didn't end." Uh, <laughs> you know, what yeah. I mean, like that. Finally, that they, that they've kissed, and it's like, oh, it's not the end of the world. Literally, you know, what I mean that it's happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I did quite quite like that. And then yeah, they walk away, and we're just left with sort of that. Did it? Did it live up to expectations? Is it because they've been building to this for a long time? Was this the right way to do it? Hmm. Good question. Um, I don't think it didn't feel earned because it definitely did. This is seven seasons in, you know what I mean? Like, for sure, for sure. But it didn't feel like at the height of like an emotional moment that it could have been because this episode really wasn't about Mulder and Scully. Mm-hmm. It was about finishing <laughs> finishing this guy's story, this Frank's story. Yeah. So it kind of it did feel a bit like they stuffed this on at the end of the episode. You know what Can I mean? I counter that. Go on. I think you forget how big a deal the millennium was. True, true, true. true. Like the millennium, like it was so huge. Going into like the new a thousand years, it was a, such a big deal. Maybe this was like Right, we're gonna wait. What better way to wait until the kiss until the year two thousand, or at least the millennium episode of this yeah, show? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that. that was their thinking. Uh, yeah, I, I, again, I'm not disappointed with it because I feel like no, it's, I, I, I feel think like you I think your views are completely valid, by the yeah. way, for sure. Yeah, I again, I, I didn't come away from it going, "Oh, they ruined it." it. It's it's one of those where it's just like, was that the right moment? I'm not sure. But I'm also glad it's finally happened as well. It's kind of like that. Oh, finally! Now we can move on. Now they've done the, the first kiss. They can move, we can move on from that kind of uh, what's it called? Um, I can't think of the right words. That that thing hurdle. I guess that hurdle. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really bad saying it's a hurdle to get over. But it, because it's people have been clamoring for it, they just need to do it at some point. Um, yeah, because it, it it starts becoming its own thing, doesn't it? Yeah, it yeah. starts becoming its own sort of like. It's always there in the background. If, yeah, if you, yeah. The longer you put it off, the more it'll sort of like overshadow any story you try and tell. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, that was the end of the episode. Um, what do you think? Great way to end the episode. Yes. Like, yeah. For sure. Like going off that, like it literally, I was like, oh, oh, okay. This is interesting. Um, the episode itself, I enjoyed. I don't know whether um, for like a Monster of the Week type of episode, I don't know whether it was... And um, the best I've seen, like I, I probably enjoyed last week's episode a little bit more for content, but the kiss at the end kind of makes it yeah, better. Definitely. Like yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, it's it, that last five minutes alone was worth watching the episode for. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, 
I mean, oh, wow, well, I don't know why I'm nice saying it was a good episode. I really, I, I did enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's one of those, I, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as last week's in terms of like the actual episode as a whole. I think definitely the, the ending uh, cements it as an all-timer but just because of what happened. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. I'm not going to tell you it's the best episode ever, but you have to watch it because of this moment. Um, but I quite enjoyed it, like in terms of like just the story itself. Just because, do you know what I think it is? I quite like zombie stories, like and yeah, stuff like, I like zombie yeah, films true. and stuff like. That. So that that it has that kind of oh, X Files finally did a zombie story. And it didn't feel stupid. You know what I mean? Like, no, I thought uh, uh, within the zombie genre, I thought they nailed it. To be yeah, honest, yeah. I thought it was a really good job. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed it for what it was, and yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to sort of remember it for the final final scene. So. Yeah, um, but I did think as well, maybe um, it would be a bit more, um, it would be a bit more significant if we'd have seen Millennium, but also I'm not going to go back and watch three series of a a show just because I want to watch one episode of a show that I'm already watching. Luke's production notes. Millennium serves as a crossover for the Fox series Millennium, also created by Chris Carter. Although Millennium, which debuted in 1996, it had enjoyed critical acclaim, it suffered from low ratings and was cancelled after its third season. Unfortunately, the final episode of Millennium had been filmed before the cancellation notice and resulted in the series concluding on a cliffhanger. The worst way to end a series. So was this answering questions from the cliffhanger, do you reckon? Uh, yeah, so uh, it goes on. Uh, this episode features the last appearance of Frank Black and Jordan Black, which is his daughter. And for this reason, it's often cited as a way to bring closure to the Millennium series and its story arc. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, basically, they this is their way of writing it out in a kind of more... Yeah, so- I definitely... Like, I think it's like you said at the beginning. I, def- I don't know whether it took away, but I think it definitely would have elevated... Yeah, yeah. Or maybe because as well, it felt like quite a quick wrap up as well. So maybe it's disappointing um, as an ending as well. So who knows? Possibly. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. I suppose we can't really judge it until we no. watch Millennium. Yeah, yeah. Um, incidentally, the episode is, is actually the second crossover between the X Files and Millennium. The previous crossover involved a minor character, author Jose Chung from Jose Chung's From Outer Space, who appeared and was killed in the Millennium, ep- Millennium episode, Jose Chung's Doomday- Doomsday Defense. Oh, that's my favourite episode. I think so. I need to watch Millennium now. <laughs> yeah, and find out his, his end as well. Um, the idea to use zombies for Millennium arose from a uh, from a separate aborted project. Reportedly, Stephen King, who had co-penned the fifth season episode to Chinga, uh, wished to write an episode based on George A. Romero's cult zombie film Night of the Living Dead. Romero was also slated to direct the episode. According to Millennium co-writer and exec- executive producer Frank Spotnitz, the staff of the X-Files met with King and Romero, and the two showed an interest in producing the episode. While the episode was slated for the seventh season, it never came to fruition. Interesting. So, um, I wonder then- what that would have looked like, though. That... that- <laughs> quite yeah. interesting yeah it, it, there's loads of these different things in like Hollywood and stuff like that where you think these could have been of, of what what could have happened if this certain like director had done this like there's a really great one about have you ever seen have you seen Cape Fear uh, the remake I've Scorsese not I've remake. not seen I've not seen it but I've seen enough of it to know basically what it's about what it's know, about yeah okay so obviously Scorsese horror very Hitchcockian like it's very uh, yeah you can see it in with he, Scorsese is influenced by him, but Scorsese doesn't usually do horror. No, no, no. Um, and there's a really great story of he was actually Scorsese was actually working on a um, a Holocaust film, mm. um, and he was really struggling to find the tone. He didn't really work with his style. He was I have just a feeling struggling. I know where this is going. <laughs> and he had lunch with another director. As the story goes, that was working on a horror film, and he was struggling with the horror film as well. And the director in question ended up being Steven Spielberg, who was um, was working on Cape Fear, and Scorsese was working on Schindler's List. Mm. And they both basically went, I think you'd be perfect for this. And uh, as the legend goes, they swapped films, mm. which is, I thought, again, but 
the question in my left in my mind was like, I wonder what the version yeah. would be like yeah. the other way the, around. The, the you know what I mean? If, if you, there's loads of stuff with that with Spielberg because um, there's there's a story that he actually directed Poltergeist as well. He's not credited with directing it at all. Um, okay. It's credited uh, to Toby Hooper, I think, who did Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Um, but have you ever watched Poltergeist? I have a long time ago. Watch it and think in the back of the back of your head, did Steven Spielberg direct it? And you will be, be like, 100% he did. Like, yeah, all of his yeah, classic, yeah. like, flourishes and, like, styles are all in it. Um, and there's, like, stories that he was on set but was never, like, the, the studio didn't want. I can't remember the reason for it. I don't know if it was a bit of an embarrassment that Toby Hooper couldn't direct this or something like that and try and keep, yeah. keep his reputation. Um, so yeah, he's not credited with it at all, but it plays out so much like a Spielberg story. It's, it's I'll have to brilliant. give that a watch. That's yeah. that does sound fascinating. But there's loads of stuff like that. Yeah, with, with Spielberg, he's kind of just he's in everything, and he <laughs> in the well, background yeah. of everything. Yeah, he's been at the top of his game for God knows how long. Well, yeah. there's going to be stories, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, back to the production notes. Uh, Zombies as a plot device would then later relegate to what would become Millennium. However, Mulder's line "shoot them in the head" it seems to stop them. Mirrors a very similar line. From Night of the Living Dead, shoot them in the head. That's a sure way to kill them. So yeah, that, that, I think there's definite like influence on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, the producers of both the X Files and Millennium had started to mull over the idea of doing a crossover when both series were still on the air. And after Millennium was cancelled, the X Files staff realized that the crossover made sense. Never, nevertheless, writing the story proved difficult, as the writers did not know whether to pen a sto- story that dealt solely with wrapping up Millennium or if they should feature elements of Millennium intermixed with an X Files. Uh, the writers eventually went with the latter. Mm. Um, so yeah, it could have been a very different episode from there as well. Um, Vince Gilligan, co writer of the episode, explained that he and Frank Spotness were more interested in what would happen if Frank, uh, Frank Black came into Mulder and Scully's world. Um, Gilligan also maintained the episode was written to finally bring zombies into the X Files universe. He explained it wasn't uh, about the plot as much as getting Mulder and Black down the basement of a creepy old house uh, with these zombies climbing out of the ground and having to shoot them in the head. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes you should chuck out some ideas into a pot and see what happens, I guess. <laughs> It's the, it's the only way you you got to you got to you got to put the, some. It's one of those like um, mind map sessions. You just throw everything on the board and see what you can see what, what you can yeah, work with. See what happens. Um, Gilligan also claimed that the fears surrounding the perceived year two thousand problem. Um, I like how it gives a description of what the year two thousand problem is um, <laughs> for anyone who, who wasn't around then. That there was a fear that computers were going to all shut down because they didn't know how to process going into a new millennium. Um, and didn't, yeah, didn't happen. Didn't, didn't happen. happen. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, nothing happened. Um, and yeah, he said that that also served as an inspiration. Uh, he later joked, "I'm proud to say I never bought into any of that Y2K BS for a minute." So there oh, you go. there you go, Vince Gilligan. Very sure of his technology. <laughs> um. Regarding the episode serving as a de facto series finale for Millennium, John Chaban said, we realized that the story needed to be an X-File and that any Millennium ending we came up with uh, came second. Um, we needed to do what we always do, which is to follow Mulder and Scully, Scully through, this, uh, through their case. For these reasons, uh, Lance Henriksen, who portrayed Frank Black, uh, was unhappy with the finished product, believing it to be a lackluster ending for the Millennium story. So there you go. So there's somebody on the Millennium side who wasn't happy with the ending, I guess. Again, it's it's hard to comment without seeing Millennium. I can definitely see how it could have been because it wasn't like Millennium focused. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if this was if this was penned as like the end to like a cliffhanger episode, then I can I can imagine it not feeling um, warranted. Yeah, and also we don't know what happened in the cliffhanger. Of like, you don't, yeah. yeah. So um, Henriksen was excited about the episode, um, but when he received the script, um, it was about zombies, much to his dim- dis- dismay. Uh, you know, the, the episode story was a reasonable X-File, but not Millennium. Um, mm. Spotnitz later admitted that the episode was not completely su- successful, I suppose, but still seems worth it for having brought back Lance Henriksen. So there you go. Um, the episode is notable for featuring the first actual kiss between Fox Mulder and Dana Scully. So that implies they're going to kiss again. So <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> um John, Sh- John Shaban developed the idea for a Mulder Scully kiss, which uh, was described by series creator uh, Chris Carter as a present for the fans. Uh, Shaban noted that the episode's kiss felt like a, the logical combination of their relationship. They'd been heading towards the kiss for years. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, obviously. 
<laughs> I, I can't imagine. Maybe, maybe it's very cynical uh, to think that uh, a story about a woman and a man detective um, as the main. I, no, I don't think that is. I, I, I think it's the chemistry between them. I yeah, don't think it's yeah. anything to do with that. Yeah, maybe. maybe yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's always going to. Hollywood can't help itself if it, if it's. A oh woman yeah, for it, sure. Yeah, it has to. But I mean, the chemistry definitely in this one. Yeah, it, it, it's earned again. It's not just like oh, we stuck two together and it's that's, yeah. that's why that's what happens. But yeah, the chemistry of it definitely added to it. But um, Gillian Anderson later explained that David and I knew the kiss was coming. I felt that the editors of the episode milked it in every uh, in a very effective way. Uh, in order to create the atmosphere of the scene, specialized camera angles were used, and everything was slowed down to make the scene last longer. Um, so there you go. Uh, they, they, they even edited the scene to make it more impactful. <laughs> um, and finally, the Millennium Ball scene was digi- digitally created um, because the episode was filmed in October, two months before the uh, event was scheduled. A uh, special effects producer was tasked with digitally adding the number 2000 to archive footage of the 1998 New Year's Eve show. Um, and Dick Clark was later hired to come in and record a voiceover to announce that it was the year 2000. Oh, that's good. So, wait there. Oh, yeah, I suppose it was filmed. Obviously, it was filmed before that. Sorry. That was an idiot moment for myself. <laughs> let's ignore that. We, we I was, was going to say, why didn't they just use the original footage? Yeah, of course, because it didn't happen yet. Yeah, we, we know there's a, lot of, there's a lot of emotion mixed up in the year 2000, so we, we understand. <laughs> <laughs> but please, please. <laughs> um, Critex Wells? It stinks. Welcome to the Critex Files. What would you rate this episode? It was going to be a seven. It's probably an eight. Uh, and that final scene brings oh, okay. it does. Yeah. I can't help it. Um, like It's veering on an 8.5, to be wow, honest okay. with you. It, it, hell, yeah. it does, because it's just, it feels like, it just feels like a culmination of X-Files. Mm. I feel like I'm giving X-Files the score more than I'm giving this episode, the score, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I think they've handled this relationship between them so well, and mm. this just feels so earned. I think you like, you said that early in the episode, and it, it really resonated with me, because earned is, like, the word to describe this. Like, it just feels right. And so, yeah, I, I thought it was a great moment, and a, a really pivotal moment in, in the show for me. That, that's the thing. They could have done this in series, the end of series one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's some TV shows that just have no patience and they're just like, well, we'll get straight to it. Um, I mean, they handled it well, but I always think um, uh, How Mate Your Mother had this same problem. They gave you the Robin relationship right at the beginning and then it was like, yeah. well, what do we do now? <laughs> so it was like them on and off for like seven series and it's like, yeah. whereas they could have I think if they'd have rushed this with a modern Scully, you'd have had this, like, they get together, then they'd have to fall out for some reason to create this course, tension again. Yeah. Whereas if you do it this late in the season now, there's no real reason for them to sort of split apart from this. Like, now they could... If the next or episode, if they do, it's the one-off. It's not yeah, they don't yeah. split up seven times. Yeah, exactly. They could literally just... Uh, Friends is another example as well, I think. <laughs> the yeah, they, yeah. They, they did it as well. Sitcoms. I think that's different yeah. rules, though. Isn't it? Yeah. Sitcoms is different. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Um, but but um, yeah. So like, uh, yeah. It, at this point of the story now, if they got together in the next episode and they are coupled going forward, that's fine because you know, uh, at some point <laughs> we knew they would get together, and it saves all this hassle of having to come up with some tension between the two of them. It's just them as a couple now going forward. Yeah. So, um. Uh yeah, so uh what did I give it? Seven point five I gave it. Um I think that's a good shout. I yeah, I, d- I definitely think it would have probably been about a better seven for me as well. Um the episode itself. Uh, it's not amazing, but I did enjoy it. Uh but yeah, I think you have to give it an extra point five at least for the case. For sure. Um what did the rest of the world give it? That's the question I'm asking. Well, if they would have given it a seven, they gave it a point eight extra. So it's seven point eight from two thousand nine hundred and seventy one oh. people. Um, so yeah, well, um, not a huge score, uh, not as big as I thought, but um, well, I mean, seven point eight is two point eight higher than Car Dogs, so they're not doing, they're doing something right. Well, car, yeah, doing I mean, something right. I mean, Car Dogs, we have no barometer of what the quality of that is at all, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
that's the end of Critics Files, and that's the end of the episode. So um, if you want to get in touch with the show, um, obviously we're doing checks. Uh, sorry, I'm getting ruining my own segment. Dan's Twitter co- corner. Um, <laughs> uh, we're doing that again there. So uh, yeah, if you if you want to get your tweets in, uh, emails as well. I actually uh, I've set up a, a, a link tree. Uh, is what the kids use these days. Uh, and Ooh, there's hello. links to all of our things. So if you, uh, just on, funnily enough, it's on our Twitter. <laughs> so you have to go <laughs> there to find it. Um, I might include that actually in the the, the, the podcast going forward. I think that'd be helpful. Yeah, that's a good idea. Saves using, saves having a big... virtual business card. Yeah, exactly. That's um, how Luke described it to me when I said, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we, all, all of the links will be in there. But uh, yeah, if you want to get in touch, Twitter, email. Uh, that kind of stuff uh, will we'll respond on there. Um, next week, we are looking at an episode. Um, it, it's entitled Rush, which just reminds me of the 2010 Formula One film that I watched recently. Great film. <laughs> it is a really good film. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But I don't know if I don't know if this will have uh, a man burnt in the car. I can't wait to see Mulder and Scully racing around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, in Monza, of all places. <laughs> like, oh, we, we finally get our European episode. <laughs> um, but yeah, apart from that, uh, we'll speak to you next time. a good episode i thought yeah i think it might have went a little bit long but uh um, yeah i mean to be fair one hour it's not Mulder's kiss good. man you get you gotta but hey, we got everything in i think that was yeah good. yeah definitely yeah yeah uh i just had a quick thought mm-hmm. it, we could maybe redo the ending i don't know if you've got time i was just thinking that like maybe as a little bit of catharsis for me like we could do like we could do our own Millennium Countdown. We could like use that toy to do our own Millennium Countdown. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> we do that. Millennium if, we, Countdown, yeah. if we if we just get the sound from the toy, like I I'd like it. Get the sound from the toy. We'll wait for the laugh. We'll count down with the toy. I finally get that moment. It's a great ending to the to the end of this this episode. Yeah, go on then. We will do that then. <laughs> I'll, I'll do you, some. I'll, I'll do some editing. Yeah, it'll be fine. God, oh, I can't wait. Okay. Let's wait for the laugh. Okay. We'll count down with it. And then, like I said, this is Happy New Year. We'll cut the episode off then. Yeah, yeah. All right. No worries. Right? So, like, that's like it's a cold ending. So, like, right at the end, Happy New Year. And then just, like, make sure to cut it off right at the end. Right yeah? at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Are you, are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready, yeah. Wait for the laugh and then start countdown. Okay, oh, this okay. is going to be great. I can't wait. This is, like, this is 22 years of pain we're curing here. Okay. Okay, yeah. Right. I'm going to set, set it off. Ten, nine, eight, seven, 